Good morning! Welcome to Thursday! For once I actually know what the day is because it's art day! And today we are doing Van Gogh. Well, my style of Van Gogh. Influenced by Van Gogh, my attempt at my picture in Van Gogh style. So we'll have to see how this goes. I'm sure it will be fun because I've always loved his work. I must say I'm incredibly lucky to have been to the Van Gogh Museum, as you can see by the book. Morning Sue. The book on my desk is one that I purchased when I was lucky enough to go to Amsterdam in December. And Oh, I'd spent an entire day at the museum. I got the earliest slot I could um, because there when you buy your museum ticket, it's worked on time slots. So I got the earliest time slot I could and spent the entire day there. I walked around and around and around, backwards, forwards, upstairs, downstairs. <laughs> um, it was just so uplifting to be standing in front of this master's work and the amazing thing about this man is because of all the letters that he wrote to his brother you can you you know we know so much about him so this is the picture that i'm going to be doing it's an ongoing project i started this last week olga heldwein set this challenge for me and I rather like it. It's take one photograph and work it in as many different ways as possible. So the first week I started off with my interpretation of this painting. On the Thursday, on the Friday, I did my Monet interpretation of the picture. Now I'm going to do my Van Gogh interpretation of the same painting. And I have bookmarked um, using some of my pamphlets some pages to show you guys his brush strokes and this is what I just love about his work it is so he has an underpainting of a color and then he works these incredibly energetic brush strokes over the top in thick paint and here you can see a still life of his because of course I'm doing a still life and it has got again the very obvious brush strokes on the table showing the shadow showing the vase and then I'm going to move over to his self portraits try not to get the glare on the page and he did a lot of self-portraits because he didn't have the money to actually pay for a model to sit for him and so of course sitting in front of a mirror is free and it allowed him also to play with various things that he model for and he messed around with for example here the eye color here he's painted his one eye blue and his other eye green and in fact, we know from um, tasting, it says so over here, he worked, this one was done on cardboard and his background was purple. So he, and his jacket was purple and he was playing with working with opposite colors or complementary colors as we know it. Unfortunately, it's completely faded. So this is what we can see now. And then of course, I'm going on to, this was when, um, his brother had encouraged him to go into some color because if I flip back his original works were very dark he worked with red yellow and blue and he used to moan about the fact that everything came out brown well I've done a, f a, a few posts ago I did a whole thing on color theory and I was fascinated by this picture because it's the only painting that still has its original frame and guess what he actually painted the frame and this is something that i started a couple of years ago when i was participating in a auction um and 
I had to paint a picture and it had to be framed. And just for fun, I decided to paint my frame as part of the picture. Okay, here Van Gogh has not included his still life over onto the frame, but he actually did paint his frame. So this is not an original concept of mine. Van Gogh was doing it in 1887. So there you go. Just a little piece of fun information. Then I found this and again a lot of the colors have faded. His purple has faded and again here he was playing with the idea of opposite colors. So that a lot of the purple has faded out of this one. Um, this is a flower pot with garlic chives. So he did do still lives. One of the fascinating things that I did discover, um, I'm not going to go through any more of the book, but one of the things that I found fascinating at the museum is the fact that because he didn't have money, he would use both sides of his cardboard or his board or his canvas and he didn't even paint the same way up. So they've got the canvases framed so you can see both sides. You can walk right around the display case and yes, on one side the painting is one way up and the other side is the other way up. One side is a portrait, the other side is a is a still life or a landscape it's really quite fascinating and I know one of my students discovered um, when she had some of her paintings or pictures reframed as part of a home decor thing um, the framer phoned her and said do you know that you have an original um, it's a South African artist and I want to say Derek van Rensburg it's the other one with a van uh, van der Westhuizen uh, she was completely unaware and that was painted on the back of a calendar page and so a lot of artists don't have money when they start out they might get lucky and get famous I mean Van Gogh is known to only have sold one painting um, his brother was his his supporter sorry having a sip of coffee because the frog in my throat is definitely back good morning Deirdre joining you with this <laughs> thank you okay so for those of you like Deirdre who are painting along with me or not necessarily as I'm doing it live but watching the video and painting afterwards I have prepped all my canvases in grey just so that I have the same thing tomorrow we are doing Picasso so it's a complete um, change from today's style so Monet and and dear Vincent are very similar in style but let's see where today takes me so i need my palette over here i've got my paints ready and as usual i'm going to sketch it out in white and go from there one of the things that i'm loving about doing this project is that i am doing a bit more research and it's a lovely way to learn so Another reason that um, Van Gogh loved to do his portraits was because he could play with color. He didn't necessarily have a purple jacket, but he painted it purple. So just because something in your picture is a certain color doesn't mean that you can't change it. Okay, so for today, I'm going to leave a fair amount of background because one of the things I love about Van Gogh is his background brush strokes where he paints around things he almost gives them halos and for those of you who know Van Gogh's Starry Starry Night you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so that is my intention for that so I'm just plotting where I'm gonna go I, I, I want quite a lot of background so my vase I'm going to do kind of there um, which means it's going to be about so big. Um, so I'm, I'm really just sketching, sketching it out again like I normally do. And so I've got some fallen flowers over here. Um, I've got the base of the... Come on, I've got no paint left on my... I've got the base of my candlestick over here, uh, which is quite tall. And I've got my flowers, which 
are really rather large and touch touch the candlestick and then I've got this flower over there that white flower over there and then I have my jug which pops out the top and comes back down follows itself goes back up has the top curve over there and then my favorite bit which is the handle which always has a sound effect <laughs> so I can hear you all doing that when you're painting it Schwing. Belinda's version of a Bob Ross moment okay so that's that where is the top of my candlestick it's sort of above just above this flower which is there and um, just above that curve so it is approximately over here with its little centerpiece right so now that I've got that plotted in I'm going to start on my background because I want to be able to play and mess and get all my brush strokes as vibrant as possible and then tidy up with my object on top hmm. Okay, so now color scheme. Let me just grab the other two that I have done. It's a good thing I don't have a huge studio because it's literally two steps away. So this was my first version, my interpretation of the picture. This was my Monet version where his brush strokes were definitely smaller and more angular on the table and kind of vertical in a lot of his backgrounds um, so I'm trying to get the typical Van Gogh um, brush stroke in my background and I need my jar of cream now you wouldn't believe but I actually do tidy up my studio week to week I forgot to take that out but now I have nice fast speedy wheels I can zoom across the floor my husband fixed my chair it's quite fabulous okay so now 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 um, keeping in mind I I'm not necessarily going to go very different with my colors because I want to have these as a set of six pictures that kind of work together um, Van Gogh liked really bright colors I'll stick to having my brights probably here um, and there aren't really other than the blue there isn't really so blue is the strongest color and this red opposite to red being green he played a lot with opposites so if he had um, orange there would definitely be blue near it so I'm probably going to bring a little bit of orange into my background to complement this blue and so let's get some paint out on my palette starting with some orange I'm going to bring in so this is just called flesh tint which is quite orange in itself it's it's peachy colored and then I'm going to bring in a nice blob of this cream and I'm also going to I think I'm going to use probably um, some of this raw umber which is 705 in the dollar colors um, as just a, a shadow color because remember my light is coming from the side so my shadows on my objects are the side and I want as I've done in these backgrounds I've got my light here my dark there so I'm going to try and attempt a similar sort of look with 
I'm going to start off with a bigger brush. Good morning, Vasilis. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you have better internet today. You were popping in and out much better on Tuesday. So yes, I'm splitting my lives between craft and fine art. Um, partly for myself, in that I love to do both. Um, and partly for the fact that I have two followings from my studio days in Cape Town where I taught art to adults. For 20 years I had my own studio. I'm one of those incredibly lucky people who my job didn't ever feel like work. I, you know, enjoyed getting up every day to see what my students would be coming in with to paint. I didn't set projects. The only project I set was the circle project, which is what I have done already on my, I think it was now three weeks ago. I started with the circle project to show how I do color theory and brush control and textures and things like that, blending. And, um, so that was the only project that I stipulated because I felt it was important for me to know where my students... Oh, I'm hiding half my canvas. How about that? Whoops. Okay, well, we've... I did say I wanted lots of background, so there we go. Um, so that little project would allow me to um, see where my students' skill set was, what they struggled with, what they understood, what they didn't understand. And it was a particularly difficult project for most people because they weren't copying something. So when you are working from a photograph, from a still life, plein air painting, which is what these guys love to do, the impressionists, the post-impressionists, um, you have the color scheme in front of you, even though, like I've said now, Van Gogh would change his color scheme um, according to what suited him and what he was experimenting with at the time. Um, and when you did the circle project where I had taught color theory and you were literally trying to use one side of the color spectrum, for example, working with yellows, oranges and reds in one circle, um, one had to th make it up oneself and I think people really struggled with that concept and it wasn't the easiest project on the face of this planet and I know a lot of people rushed it and then were actually quite sorry later but that's what it was um, okay I'm bringing this down too low because in actual fact I've got my table over there so this needs to go and I'm gonna go because of this hmm I'm still in two minds Van Gogh and his contemporaries used to like bringing the diagonal to, to feel like a table across like that. So I think I'll do the same. So there's my table. Anyway, so my students used to struggle with the circle concept. And I know one of my students who brought a friend along said to her, just rush the circle project so you can get onto doing the fun stuff, you know, like a real painting. And that person came to me afterwards and she said, I'm so sorry I did because I didn't realize how much you actually learn in that project. And she went back and she did the circles again. And it's something you can go back to and try and experiment because that's, that's how these guys, I'm saying these guys, the masters, that's how they learned. I mean, they experimented with things. That's why there are so many pictures because they painted lots and they painted often to learn. And in Van Gogh's case, he wrote the most incredible letters to his brother, explaining, sending little samples and explaining what he'd learned and, you know, where he'd been and what he'd done and why. Um, so now, these days, <laughs> can you imagine in a hundred years from now, if you look at how technology has changed so much like when I first started with a computer it was dot matrix so we had to it was almost like coding you had to start out start to save there were no pictures it was a black screen with either green or orange writing 
um, and you had a great big floppy disk that could hold like just about one document um, by comparison today I mean my phone it has much more capacity than at least the first three computers that I ever owned and then we went on to those little hard uh, disks stiffy disks hi Paul and um, I mean we can't even read any of those things now so we don't have devices that can actually get any information off there I've got photographs stuck on stiffy disks that I don't know how to get off and so can you imagine a lot of people are storing their work digitally like I'm doing this as a Facebook live um, it will be saved to YouTube but in 10 years time what will we be doing where will we be how will we be communicating storing stuff and I'm getting a bit fluffy here in my background as I get down to what is table level because sticking out over here should be the bowl I completely forgot to put the dish in Okay, so my dish actually is there, going right off the table. Fine. So I'm now trying to create the same feeling that Van Gogh did with his background strokes, for example, in his Starry Starry Night. So I've got a base background of the grey. And I've got flowers that will be coming over here so I need to start bringing my brush strokes well I've got the straightness of this candlestick here um, so maybe I should curve around the flowers a little bit because there will be a flower here okay so now I've got that in and I've started putting in the table area with what's left on my brush and of course at the bottom here now I need some I'm gonna pull that up slightly I'm working on my easel so that I can see better because I can work flat but it's a little bit harder to it's a little bit harder to see what one is doing so I'm trying to create my feeling of the table, the horizontal um, table coming towards you and I'm not going to do too much of this color in the background because this is where my shadow area is going to be but I'm just getting my diagonals right because one thing that drives me mad is um, just because you're doing a diagonal on this side it can be at this angle and on that side it's that angle what one needs to try and do is keep one's brush strokes to the same degree and the other thing that I've just noticed that I've done over here is one's hand curves like a windscreen wiper on a car and what one needs to be aware of that over here I'm using the full pull of my whole arm and here I got lazy and I started using my wrist so I've got some curvy lines you need to use your whole arm and keep that motion going okay so now I've got a lot of my texture in and my directions in I'm going to start working in some other colors so here where I have got in fact reflected light so because the Sun is hitting this in this picture so brightly so strongly this flower color is actually reflecting onto the wall so I'm going to bring a little bit of this flesh tone into these brush strokes up here and so I want I want to warm this up a little bit and also because I want to give um, he had more than one color going in his background so he used to do an underpainting because as an oil painter you do what's called grounding um, to prepare your canvas and so that your eye doesn't go to any gaps in in the paint because canvas is traditionally pale and any light color will attract your eye first because it jumps forward so one wants to avoid that 
and I'm going to bring this orangey color quite close up to this um, candlestick because and in fact I'm going to go quite bold and strong with quite strong orange in here because I'm playing with the concept that Van Gogh used to do, which is to put the opposite colors in. And of course, there's the blue in this patterning that is happening on the candlestick. So I'm intentionally bringing it in and I'm intentionally using his curved brush strokes. And he, he used to do what I tell my students not to do. He has almost perfect airspace in between these lines they don't really touch some of them overlap um, and I'm gonna bring because the blue is on the jug a lot of the orange here as well and okay so now I've got that going there now I'm gonna start bringing in some of this raw umber down at the bottom because there's shadow happening at the bottom at the back and I'm wanting to just intimate at the fact that it's darker down here so I'm just using the tip of my brush I could use a smaller brush um, using the tip of my brush to just and I've still got the orange in my brush here So I'm going to work that back and I'm going to follow these swirly motions that he loved to do. And in this side here I'm going to bring quite a lot of shadow. and work it up because I want these flowers to pop on onto my background and bring a bit of shadow up there because I want the white of the jug to show up so I'm kind of invoking the starry starry night feeling up at the top there and again on this side I want to bring and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go vertical with my brush strokes here and I'm still got some of the orange on my brush and in behind the jug and of course he followed the form of his object so here I'm going to start following the form of the jug handle and create some shadow behind it and this is my darker side of my canvas So I'm going to have bigger, bolder brush strokes and I'm, I'm mirroring the shape of the jug handle. Over there. And in fact, I'm now going to start bringing in some of the Payne's Grey because I want my shadows to be a whole lot darker sorry I dropped my lid there we go oh. okie dokie I need a sip of coffee all this talking it's like Um, one has to constantly think out loud so that's what I'm doing I am thinking out loud 
And I've just noticed that here in my picture, it looks like my table is there and then it is there. So it's obviously going at an angle. Um, so it's a bit of a Mona Lisa background. One of the things that the Mona Lisa picture is so famous for is the fact that the hill on one side is, or well, the ground is on one level and on the other side of her it's the other level. If my art teacher Narina de Villiers is listening, you see I was taking in information. <laughs> we used to have to write essays and things, we used to have to know all these details and of course back then we couldn't do research online it was all done in massive books we had the hugest art history book on the face of this planet it used to fill up my suitcase all by itself it used to live at home we had ones in the classroom we could use I'm gonna bring some of this down here so I'm building these Van Gogh strokes as I call them I might go a bit bolder and brighter and whiter in my light at the top but at the moment I'm just building these brush strokes and of course over here I very definitely need um, diagonals and here some of his brush strokes were quite long and bold it also depends on uh, when he was painting obviously his styles change like all artists as they learn something new and as they learn and grow their technique changes their color palette changes I mean his went from being so brown and so morbid almost somber um, color scheme to incredibly vibrant and light and uplifting and yes so also his moods he he was he struggled with depression and it was quite obvious in his um, studies and what he chose to paint depending on how he was feeling and he painted a lot when he was in the asylum and sometimes I mean so even though he was confined so much like us now we all confined he was confined to the asylum for his own safety after the ear incident and what kind of colors am I using I'm using acrylics the sillies I only work I can work in oil I personally prefer to work in acrylic because it dries nice and quickly so I can work on top like I am doing now I am using the paints I brought with me from South Africa they are quite transparent they're very similar to Amsterdam paints there's a brand here that I've come across called Amsterdam and they are quite similar to that in texture and in um, translucency etc it's um, the colors are quite translucent so you can build up layers um, I find with oils because I like to put my hand down quite often I find with oils I mess incredibly quickly because it takes a few days to dry and um, I forget and I put my great big fist in it so now I'm trying to create the illusion of the edge of the table from the back there and trying to keep my brush strokes coming forward in the same angle I haven't been able to well I haven't purchased the paint art acrylics I would love to try those I'm sure they are amazing um, I actually don't own any paint art stuff I've seen the work you do with the paint art stuff the sillies and it's really gorgeous okay I'm not wanting to go too dark I'm gonna bring some dark up from the table and I'm <laughs> just using what's serendipitously coming off my brush which is the orange and the raw umber because I've got to bring my light across here so I don't want to get too dark 
the joy is that um, titanium white will cover just about anything so right I've got that going now now where while I've got this dark going on my brush I'm going to work it here in the dish so there is a dish underneath the jug and it is kind of curving like that and I want it nice and dark over here so that when I bring my flowers in it and I think I can even bring that further up I want my white flowers to flow onto that so I'm still using the same little brush strokes and I want this edge even darker over here so I'm building another layer on top and now have I got paint everywhere again I want to build and because now this is my own interpretation of what I have learned um, smaller brush strokes go further away bigger brush strokes feel closer to you so I'm going to start overworking this area over here with smaller little dabs of color to try and give the impression that it is further away and smaller so I'm going to do the same over here just it's a visual trick to trick your eye and because this is all in shadow at the back here and <clears throat> take some of that join it up a little bit because I've got a little bit of a harsh line between where my table ends and my background starts so try and keep to the same angle again and bring that forward again I want quite a lot of shadow in front of this candlestick so that I can build on top of it and here I think my brush strokes got a little bit woolly and wild so I will tame them with some smaller brush strokes okay and now I'm going to do what? I'm going to I'm almost done with the background so I think I'm going to bring some I'm going to start with the white and build my pot. So I'm just washing my brush up of the picture, trying not to use my coffee mug as my water jar. I shouldn't have put them right next to each other. Right. Now, use my roller towel to dry my brush. I'm going to get the underpainting of my jug in starting at the top here I'm going to put in this handle and I'm trying not to be too perfect if you know what I mean it's tempting is tempting and there is the body of the jug and it comes around here and goes up there and 
and here's the spout of the jug. So I'm also going to leave some of my background color shining through. Where I want it nice and bright, I'm going to put it on quite thick. And there is some white happening at the top here of the jug where it goes down into. into some shadow area and then we have the rest of the body of the jug which disappears behind these flowers okay so now I've got that structure in now I'm going to come to this pesky bowl that I forgot about earlier. So I'm going to try and create this pesky bowl. I'm going to start at the front and create that curve. So I'm using my hand angle to create the swing of the curve. And then I'm going to use, now you see I've got a little bit of paint on myself there. I'm going to use the tip of my brush just to blend that in. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. Now I'm going to work on my vase, which... I need this curve here and I'm just reconstructing it from when I was doing my background and as I said the nice thing about this titanium white is it has quite good coverage and so it is very white over here so I'm gonna make nice big brush strokes here, bold white and then I'm going to use smaller little brush strokes to create the feeling of shadow and roundness. So remember that the direction, especially in something like this, the direction of your brush strokes are incredibly important. They help to create the feeling of the object so I'm kind of trying to create the feeling of the tummy of this fat jar with the direction of my brush strokes. And it's a bit whiter there. And of course here where it where the sunlight is really really hitting it, I'm going to make it nice and white on this edge and on this lip over here and of course there's a lot of reflected light because this flower is pale and it's hitting reflected light back at the jar which is a bit like having two suns in one room but reflected light is a real thing Something that used to fascinate me is in, at my mom's house in Bergfried, she had red bricks outside the one window in the lounge and the sun would reflect off the red bricks onto the ceiling and make it pink. It was quite something and grass can do the same. So the green grass outside, the light can reflect off that green grass and make it make something that you know is white green. Now we're going to go up here to this candlestick and that is too high. Delete. 
I'm going to I think what I'm going to do is put in put in this first my straight ah oh, get my hand in my let's move that I'm not using it right now get a nice straight stripe so now I want the front of my brush even though I'm using a full bit I want to use the front of my brush towards that line that I want nice and straight and so now of course I've stuck my hair <laughs> I've stuck it so I can't move it so now I need to use this and that is just awkward but it's possible and I can't talk and do it at the same time so I'm just gonna do it from here whoops I'm leaning on my easel and it just moved okay and again I'm going to let my background shine through as part of my coloration for my object and I'm going to use lots of little brush strokes lots of happy little brush strokes it's quite a fat candlestick and it has a foot that comes now where's this vase it comes down and out and around and curves and goes up and mm, I think it's a little bit more pointy there you go and then while I'm busy with this it's quite a strong angle over there and I really am tempted to turn this upside down because it's very hard to paint the same angle and she goes quiet as she concentrates chat amongst yourselves people chat amongst yourselves morning Bryony. morning amber who else has popped in so i'm doing the van gogh my van gogh interpretation of this painting today and now I need that angle and that angle and <clears throat> get this curve right at the top so whatever this curve is here this curve needs to be the same because that's how it works I know you're seeing things at a different angle sometimes you're seeing a tall object from the top and from the bottom but technically the curve should be the same and there are no points on any lips so I'm trying to make that feel and that's too high so this curve with a shaky brush needs to be the same as this curve because they will mirror each other is that the same it's really wonky wonky wear back to the garden route doing wonky wear and i need to put in the actual candlestick bit which is up here and again okay so i'm gonna just leave that to dry for a bit before i can come back and play with it but i'm happy with kind of my base structure here 
Now, I need to put in a couple of other colors, I think. So I've got, let's have a look see. I think while I've got this white on my brush, I'm going to bring some white into this area up here in the background where it is lighter on this side. Bring it down into this orange a little bit. Because I'm trying to keep my light on this side and have my dark on that side of the canvas. But I'm also trying to keep to Van Gogh's painterly brush strokes kind of like starry starry night right now now I can go back to my palette oh no don't do that guaranteed to get my hand in that lot so best I wipe that up and I'm now going to Put in some of the shadows so again i'm just repeating colors and i'm going to build some shadow on the side of the handle of the jug and i'm going to build up from here inside the jug oh my word it is the day for getting paint on me. I'm going to look like a canvas by the time I'm finished. But I like to have my picture on this side because that's where my view is. The joys of painting live. Okay, and I need to tidy up this point that I seem to have created with my over excitable brush strokes in the white. And the flowers will be difficult. I can't see all of your quote, Di Diane, on my screen right now, but I will read it afterwards. Well, I hope I hope what I'm I'm glad what I'm saying kind of makes sense. As I said, this is my interpretation. That's why I'm not copying. The best way to learn is to actually copy. Um, one of his paintings because you can then almost learn how he was thinking while he was working and it is much easier to actually copy something that is already painted because the interpretation is already there for you I'm gonna just bring more of a curve into my bowl I want the dark in there anyway for just now when I work on top of it and right now where okay I think that's dry that's the joy of acrylics that is dry so I'm now going to put in theory some of the shadow that is happening inside inside there Um, inside here so I need my straight line of my of my candlestick and then I need to work the shadow there and of course there's a lot of shadow on this side over here and then 
try and straighten up this line. Seriously wonky candlestick. And of course, this would be my shadow side, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to bring it along there like that. I'm gonna come with a brighter blue and put the patterning on. Um, but at the moment, I'm trying to just create the structure of the object. So not everything that Van Gogh did had hectic texture on. Well, it depended on his picture at the time. So I'm just adding the shadow and so I'm trying to get the curve of the candlestick. Because it's round, it would be shaded on the side and of course you can see again this is reflected light coming off the edge of the jug and I need to finish this candlestick shadowing before I put my flowers in because the flowers are going to grow over onto my candlestick. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. Okay, so now I'm just trying to create, again this is the shadow side against the edge of the jar, jar and there's some shadow over here. Just to try and help create the curve. Okay, so now, where to next? I've got inside of my jug going, I've got some of my jug structure going, I've got that going. Just a little bit of insight into how I think. I think I need a smaller brush, which I was a bad girl and I didn't wash. Oh, bad, bad, bad girl. I'll be up for brush abuse. And then my brand new brushes too from Jackson's. Oh, bad, bad, bad girl. Okay, they will recover. I have brush cleaner. It's not ideal, but okay. So, recover that one. I want a little bit of brown in here. Morning, Amina. And today I don't have the clock in the room, so I have no idea how late it is. So it could be afternoon, it could be after 12 o'clock. So I'm just trying to create this straight line in my, in this shadow in my candlestick, remembering that it has a curve. And again, I'm going to bring a little bit more shadow in there. And I'm going to bring it along the lip and try and fade it out. And still keep the curve. Okay. Now. Where to next? Where to next? I am going to... I think I'm going to play with my flowers. So both brushes need washing. And trying not to wash it in my coffee cup. So I'll just remove the coffee and drink it. Oh, mom's brought me a, brought me a, a watch. 12.02, so good afternoon, people. Yeah, oh, no, it's five minutes fast, so it's three minutes to 12. 
Thanks, Mum. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my flowers. Back to the white and trying to. I'm doing this flower first. And I'm going, it's a rose. And I want. It's a kind of a collapsed rose. It was probably an iceberg at one stage of its life. And I'm probably going to land up no matter what the style, even tomorrow's um, cubist. I might land up with all very similar flowers because I don't know how else to paint flowers in any other style. I'm trying to use small brushes, small brush strokes. Okay, now I need a little bit of. I'm going to bring some okay, brush in my mouth. Bad habit. Some yellow ochre okay. because the flower center is over there. And just for fun, I'm going to bring some orange in and bring a little bit of shadow in and bring a little bit more shadow in with some paint gray. Okay, I'm going to let that settle and where was I? Back to some petals. Okay, what I do like to do, so now I'm going to use my sucker stick and I'm going to grab out some white and put it on my palette over there and I'm going to grab some more white and put it over here because I need to start building some other colors in the way of pink and so on. So I'm going to squeeze out some Oh, red and maybe I'll have some pie roll red today. It's quite a nice um, scarlet almost because um, it's all very dull and monochromatic at this stage. I need some fun stuff happening. I'm now going to bring in, so I'm going to work from back to front. So I've put that guy in. I need to put this pink collapsed guy in over there. So I'm going to take some white, put it over there. Remembering to work from light to dark. So I'm taking a big block of white and adding a tiny smidgen of the red to make my pink. And I'm going to put in my collapsed flower sort of over there like that and it needs I'm gonna bring in some much warmer oh that color is so intense oh my word override 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 epic fail get it off my brush let's start again good grief that color is strong pigment loading in the golden colors is incredible Okay, so I wanted it slightly warmer over here and I'm intimating at this collapsed flower and some of it has collapsed onto the vase. Okay, while I've got this delicious color, I'm going to go and play up here and I'm going to create this flower over there and I'm going a little bit brighter than what is there because I can because that's what Van Gogh did he played with color and I need to get it bigger and onto my background because I have worked oh, I can come back and fix that perhaps these should have been sunflowers he loved studying sunflowers and he'd even study them dead
So I'm trying to create the feeling of the direction of the brush strokes are using my petals. Um, and there's some definite dark area in there. Not quite sure what flower this was actually. Okay. Now, where do I want to go? Now I'm going to create this collapsed per flower person, flower, and I'm going to bring a little bit of ochre as an underlying warmer color, and that is far too much. I'm being a bit generous today with my added color. Let's try that up there. Right, that's a bit better. So I'm wanting a warmer color because this is where the sun is hitting this flower over here, which has completely collapsed. And is up here as well. And I want some highlight. So Van Gogh worked with really thick paint for his top layers. Um, I might still do that. But these are going to go under glass because I've got a series of frames. So I'm working on it's actually this is particular this is an oil paper pad. So in other words it's for oil painting paper pad. But um, I'm using it for acrylics. I did a test run before I did the series and worked that this paper actually works the best. Because of course under lockdown I can't go shopping. Well I did. I tried. We are at least allowed to go to hardware stores and things like that. But um, yeah, <laughs> I'd say everybody had the same idea and rushed out and bought canvases, paint, um, craft stuff to keep either themselves or their kids busy. I'm now busy with this flower on this side. Back to my pinks and I now need to go on to my candlestick and I'm just brightening up the color slightly. It's also another collapsed flower. It's not a perfect vase of flowers. This was the flowers that were in my room when I went to visit my sister-in-law. And for those of you who've been into the painting sessions with me, you're probably tired of the same stories. I try not to repeat myself too much. There's a little bit of a pink flower happening down here in the back. And it's got a leaf that's kind of sticking out here. And okay, so now, now, now I need to come into this bright red guy. And I'm going to start off softer, maybe not. And This one is and it is flopping in this way. I'm going to take it slightly over the lip. And this petal is flopping that way. And there's a little bit of shadow in here. So I'm trying to sort of intimate at what is happening in the background here and underneath this flower. And there's definitely some bluish red happening under there. And this petal is kind of 
come back with some of that red on top. Okie dokie. Right, I think I'm going to bring this guy further down. And I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Make the circle bigger. Make my flower bigger. And uh, so today they're not drilling. I don't know if you can hear the hammering in the background. I complain that I have building dentists. Maybe I'll have some orange in here. Okay. And now I'm finding that this here is not working for me. It's not standing out enough. And I'm going to make this flower a little bit bigger but I haven't got my green in yet and let's see what's on my brush I need some shadow colors going over here so I'm gonna just play with this a little bit more and I think that could have a bit more depth and right let's wash brush and see what is happening have a clean brush is this brush clean no yes yes that brush is clean <clears throat> okay so i'm wanting to push my jug back a little bit so i'm going to what am I going to use for that? I think I'm going to use a bit of this cream that I've got in the background just to push my jug back. Because I'm not wanting to introduce too many more colors. So I'm using the same cream that I had in my background. I'm going to use it a little bit more in my jug. And in fact, I like that idea. I'm going to use it a little bit in my in my candlestick. And I'm using the Gox little tiny brush strokes. And this is so skew, it's just not funny. <laughs> I've just realized that is terribly, terribly skew. Candle, wood fall out. Much better. And we can bring some warmth into this. And I'm going to bring a little bit of the yellow ochre into this, like some sunshine hitting it. I know it's white, but I want a little bit more warmth happening and while I've got this going over here um, this is sunshine coming in a door and I'm going to do what Van Gogh did on his shadow so he had his table going this way and his shadow at a different angle I'm gonna see what happens if I bring my sunlight this way from my jug my not my jug my vase my vase depending on where you're from a little bit more yellow ochre in it and some stronger brush strokes. Okay, that's starting to work. I'm happier with that. Um, and so it comes in front of the vase and goes past it. I'm going to let it sort of fade out over there. 
And I quite like the way this is clipping the canvas texture of the paper that I'm using. And I'm going to go with some pure white and try and highlight the edges of my vase and up the fat side. And it's really, so the camera has blown this out here where it was really bright sunshine. So I'm going to bring lots of thick white paint along there. I've taken that too far up. So I'm going to have to come back with a little bit of Payne's Gray and recreate some of this structure here. And take some of that away because I've come up too high. Oops, I hope my head isn't in the picture. We've got so used to the delete button on our computers, you forget that you have a delete button on the end of your paintbrush. Okay, I'm going to make these brush strokes a little bit shorter and a little bit browner and I'm even going to bring in some orange because this is quite blue so I'm playing with what he did which is to play with the opposite colors so this is on my light side so I want more of the orange happening And I'm going to bring some of this shadow forward because it's still quite dark back there because there was a door here in the photograph that I took. Um, so I know what, <laughs> what was there and right so now I'm going to, I think this has quite a good Van Goghy feeling and it's mostly because of what's happening in my background. I now need to start bringing in the detail of my um, of my bars. And I'm using Prussian blue for that and a little bit of cobalt because I need something a bit brighter in this. Right, so now I'm going to go with the mixture of the cobalt and the Prussian and do things like this Lob and swing, swish, swirl, flourish, whatever the artist originally did on the jug. Oh, and I've got the shakes today. Too much coffee, not enough coffee, not sure. And I'm going to bring that blue up there like it is on the jug and how's our time doing? 20 past minus 22 past minus 5 because mom's given me her watch which is fast I'm going to do a bit of a swing motion down here if I can get it right. There we go. And now I need next to this orange. I'm going to fatten up. This got a bit skinny. I got a bit excitable with my background. So I'm going to fatten up my jug a bit by using 
my blue, which is on this edge over here, and just put in the pattern that is kind of happening behind the flower here. And there's some more blue happening over there, and there's some more happening here, and there's some blue happening on this now. Being careful not to get my hand in, I'm going to rest on my other hand because I need this curve. Over there. Now I'm going to bring in some of these leaves and things that are happening on the jug. And it's mostly happening in the shadow side where the sun hasn't blown it out. So again, I'm not doing hyper detail. I'm just wiggling my brush. Wiggle it just a little bit. And on this side, there's a little bit of leaf detail and vine detail happening on the vase. Which sort of fades out down here, and there's little specks of it in and there's probably this blue on the edge. I'll run out of paint. I shall mean Welcome to my Van Gogh session. I'm trying to put this rim on the vase. And I haven't brought any green in yet, but now I'm having fun with the blue. So I'm going to carry on with the blue. And here we have a very definite line, which I'm going to try and do from this angle, try and support my shaky hand today. And there's lots of design and stuff happening here. And whoops, went out the lines. So much for wiggling it, it got a little bit carried away, trying to create the feeling of this leaf pattern happening here. And there's some other funny design, and there's more leaf happening here on this side. definite leaf shapes going up and going down some other things happening and growing on the side here and there's a branch that grows along the bottom also with lots of leaf shapes and things but it's quite dark down there am I mumbling I feel like I'm mumbling. Hi, Hilary. People popping in and popping out. Okay, it's dark in there. So I'm going to bring this blue that I'm using into the shadows. And I'm going to bring some of it into table All right almost done with that what do I still need to do so I have done 
I need to still put those lines in when I need to turn that upside down for that. So I'm going to unstick it. Oh, that plastic didn't like that. Turn it upside down. Let's get rid of that. Because I need the curve of my hand, especially as today I seem to have the shakes. So I need to put and I don't know that he would have gone to this amount of detail, but it's on my other ones. There we go. And there's the line at the bottom as well. And I kind of feel like I've lost, I know it disappears into shadow there, but I've lost the foot. There we go, that's a bit better. Okay, this definitely needs some work up here. Now that I've got it loose, I can, oh my word, curves going this way, curves going that way. Why did I choose a picture that had all these curves to do online in front of you all when you can't really fiddle? Because these things are really fiddly. Right, get this curve back. Because they all have to follow each other like train tracks. And get some depth going in there. That's better. Okay, and let's get some more depth going in there. That's the joy of this. You can just build layers. Layers, layers, layers. And what else do I feel this needs? Oh, it hasn't got any green. I've got no green at all. Okay, let's read my nice thick greens. So I'm using the Kryla Heavy Body, um, which has an opacity of 10, because I need something to lift this. And then I'm going to use some Kryla Sap Green which is quite thick over there and because green is made from blue you know I'm going to start with my darker greens over here of my leaves again I'm just intimating at what is happening I'm not really putting in every leaf every everything and there's this guy that I've forgotten that is down here. So he's kind of like a dirty green. Just a hint of a leaf in. He even almost looks painted in the photograph. And there's a bit of white in it. It's like a chalky leaf in the background here. So I'm going to just intimate at it in the background behind this flower. And I'm going to, there's another leaf that hangs down here that's in the background, also sort of pale-ish. And then there's a bit of green which happens on, yeah, it's actually a, a leaf that has fallen off and is facing the other way which I discovered on the first day which looks really odd so we're just gonna make it this paint is so thick I have to add a bit of water I'm just gonna make it happen in the background there with a bit of Payne's grey to knock it back and 
and then I'm going to make it green inside here, inside the bars, a dark green. And there is a bright green leaf. Hello, Radovan. <laughs> Mandy, I'm assuming, is in the house. And there's a bright green leaf which is hanging over here, catching the sunshine. And there's this one, of course, which hangs front and center and underneath this. And it's got a, a nice fat leaf shape, just like we used to draw as kids. <laughs> I guess that's where we got it from. And I'm just going to leave that to settle for a bit. And there's some green happening here as well. That is too bright. And there's a leaf that comes down here. <laughs> Sorting rants. Oh, homeschooling. Yes, I can. I can hear what sounds like my son in the kitchen. He's clearly. We are still on Easter. Is it Easter? Yes, we're still on Easter break here. School's supposed to go back on Monday, but um, Angela Merkel said yesterday that our partial lockdown is going to carry on until the fourth of May. I'm waiting to hear what is happening with school. They were having online school. So I'm assuming that that will return. And I have having a 15 year old, he kind of manages himself. I've always laid the responsibility on him. He's the one who's got to pass, not me. I passed. I've done my bit. I do try and support where I can. But um, it is up to him. He's quite a bright kid, so unfortunately he gets away with doing not much. And now I'm back to this guy and creating his shape. And I'm going to bring some green in there. And that's what I said. My flowers are all going to land up looking the same on every one of these pictures because I don't know how to make more brush strokes than I already do normally. So I'm going to maybe fiddle a little bit more with that. And yeah, so I'm pretty much done with that for today. And it was an hour and a half seems to take me an hour and a half pretty much with talking and an introduction um, so there are still some highlights I want to put on and so the the highlight needs to happen on my candlestick so I'm gonna bring now that I put my blue on I'm gonna bring that down there I really need thicker paint and I'm going to just put the highlights maybe I'll even use I'm gonna so cheat then Gogh did not have one of these it's a Posca pen let's see is that one working no I always grab the one that's not working where is my one that's working Posca pens where are you somewhere under here where my Posca pens I can't see no yes Okay. Poor Van Gogh didn't have one of these. These are the best inventions ever. They are paint in a pen. Which allows you to do all sorts of tricks. I'm going to bring my highlight down there. And yeah, it just allows you it's just easier a little bit of a cheat okay I need to come back to this guy he is not 
sticking out enough for my liking. Where is my light? is transparent. I don't want zinc white. I want titanium white. Oh, here's my titanium white. So you can see opacity zinc white is on 9, opacity of titanium this one is on 11. So that's what I want because I want it to stand out. Maybe I need a bit of pink in these petals over here because I think I've done that the other time. I need a little bit of pink. On those petals and then I'm done for the day tomorrow is going to be a whole different ball game with dear Picasso in the mix and now I want some of my zinc white oops because I just want it to be dimensional. I want these edges to feel like they have highlights, which I'm feeling like they're not right now. And maybe they'll need some of this heavy body white down here to really make this white shine. I'm still trying to keep to his brush strokes. So. And he had very organized brush strokes. And I've spent my whole life trying not to organize my brush strokes and have them in a repeat pattern. And Van Gogh loved that repeat. So I am really struggling with this concept <laughs> of perfect airspace in between all his brush strokes. And perhaps I should have some highlight on this flower. And because his thing was all about light and highlight, and here is some highlight happening on this, and some highlight happening on there. And some highlight happening on there, but that's too much. And then on the tips of this is a highlight. And I need to come back up here and make it more obvious. And... Yeah, this has become a bit of a Siamese twin down here. And this petal is supposed to be curling this way, but it's not. Okay, enough. Enough is just a little bit more as she puts a little bit more white where the sun is catching. The sun is catching it. And a little blob of white there, and maybe a swing, and maybe a swing, and maybe another swing, because I've lost my curve. And while I've got this going, I'm going to have a swing of light up here. And a swing of light over here. 
nope now you see I'm getting too carried away and now while I've got this white I'm going to put some white there and inside there and on the brush handle here and on the brush handle where it is catching the light here Okay, I think I'm going to call stop before I mess it up. Except I want to make this flower bigger. Make the flower bigger. Okay, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Right, I'm going to call it a day and I will see you tomorrow doing Picasso.